Hello, Hacker Daisies. This is Mrs. Hunter, and today I am showing you a recording on how to find the mean. On your homework tonight, you had an assignment that said bar graphs and central tendencies, and you are trying to interpret information from this bar graph about the world's laziest animals. Now, in class these past couple of weeks, we've been doing several central tendencies, including the mode and the range and median. Um, and those have been picked up by you guys awesomely, so wonderfully, and you've been doing a great job. The challenge has been when we get to a question that is on your homework for tonight that says find the mean or what is the mean number of snoozing hours. So that's what we're going to be working on and that's what we're going to talk about. And the mean is something that is your central tendency that is giving you the average for the data that you have available. And here is our data. What I've done here is I have placed the number or the count for each one of these categories of animals uh, above the actual bar graph. So we have on our x-axis the, the animals, and then we have on our y-axis the number of hours these animals slept. So I have 12, 19, 8, 20, 14, 19, 13, 16, 14, and 13. And again, these numbers represent the number of hours these different animals slept. And what we're trying to figure out, according to this question on number eight is, what is the mean number of snoozing hours for these lazy animals? Now, all of you understand that the first step to finding the mean is to take your data and to add all of this data together. And so we will have our sum. And so that is what I've done. I have taken the 12, 19, 8, 20, and on and on until I added all of this data together, and I came up with 148 hours. Then the second part of finding the mean is to divide that sum by the numbers, the number of numbers that you have in your data set. And so in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so that is how I have 148 divided by 10. So I have my answer here, but I want us to figure out how did we come up with this answer? And this is what we're going to do. For this first problem that we're doing, I want us to use the break apart by small multiples of tens. And what we're doing is a method that I think Ms. Gardner showed many of you, and that is breaking this number up by the divisor using multiples of 10. Now, in this particular case, this is pretty simple because our divisor is 10, and we're going to divide this number and break it apart by 10. So it's going to be pretty easy. Now, some of you should know by thinking, using your number sense, that this 148 can be divided by 10 probably about 14 times because you can think, 10 times 14 is equal to 140. So we're going to have about 14 times. But for those of you who really need to see it and understand it, Mrs. Hunter is about to show you how to break this number, 148, apart. And this number, the larger number, is your dividend. This is the one that needs to be broken apart. And it's being broken apart by this type of group. By, in, this, in this particular case, it's the 10. So what we're doing is we're going to continue to subtract 10 away from 148. Now, how did you get 10, Mrs. Hunter? Well, I'm thinking of how I can make nice, even round numbers to subtract from 148 over and over and over again. Because remember that division is the opposite of multiplication. And so where multiplication is repeated addition, division is, a, is repeated subtraction. So here's what we're doing. The first thing that you're going to do to break apart 148 hours is take away 10. And then when you take away 10, what you have left is 138. In order to make this uh, equivalent, this statement, excuse me, 148 hours 
divided by 10 equivalent to what we have broken apart, it has to equal the number that I'm pointing to, which is 148. So 10 plus 138 is equal to 148. And we have 148 hours divided by 10 is the same thing as saying 10 plus 138 divided by 10. So that's your first group because 10 divided by 10 is one, but you still have all of this to break apart. So this is where the repeated subtraction come into play. The next step is to take 10 groups again from 138. So now we have 138 broken out or taking away 10 groups. So you have to add 128. So you have 10 divided by 10 plus 128 divided by 10. That is equivalent to 138 divided by 10. When you just divide this piece, 10 divided by 10, that's another group or another one. You're going to repeat this step over and over and over again until eventually you have no more full groups of 10 that you can divide by. But what you should see is that everything that I'm doing is being subtracted by 10 over and over and over again. So now I'm all the way down to 100, excuse me, I'm all the way down to now 10 divided by 10 plus 8 divided by 10. But you see that we have done this several times. Let's count and see how many times we've done it. One, well, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So we have 14 groups. But then we also have this 8 divided by 10. Now, we cannot break 8 into 10 even groups. So this is our remainder. And your final answer is going to be 14 remainder 8, or as mathematicians, you can also write it 14 with a remainder of 8 tenths, because that is what is broken up into even groups of 10, or 148 divided by 10. So on your homework, you should have the answer for number eight for the world's laziest animals. The mean number of snoozing hours is 14, basically 14 hours, 14 and eight tenths of an hour is what you should have. Now let's do another method. On the back side of your homework, you should have frog population at Tino's Pond, except this graph now is a line graph. And similar to what I've done on the other side, I've identified my major points of data. So I have 200, 375, 350, 300, 250, and 100. And at the bottom of this particular question on this side of the question, the last question says, find the mean average of frog population. So we did the same thing. We're adding 200, 375, 350, 300, 250, 100. And that gives us 1,575 divided by six. Where did we get the six? Well, if you look at your data and you count the number of data pieces you have in your data set, you should count six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So in order to find your average, again, you take the sum of all of the pieces from your data and then divide it by the number of pieces in your data set, which will be six. So now we're going to do another problem. We're going to do, we're going to do the frog population, but this time I'm going to ask you to break apart with large multiples. So you've seen this a little bit, but I want to just show you we're looking at 1,575 divided by 6. And instead of just doing 6 times 10 and breaking this apart by 60 over and over and over again and taking away 60 from 1,575, what I would like to challenge us to do to go a little bit faster 
if you're able and if you know your multiplication facts, I want you to look at all of the different types of multiples of 10 so that you can chunk away that 1,575 with a large number. So this is what I've done. I have listed my multiples of 10 times 6. So I stopped here at, at 100 times 6, and I got 600. But that's still not quite, a, that's not a lot. We still have a whole lot of subtracting to do if we just use 600. So this time, I'm going on and on until I can't move anymore. And so now I have 6 times 300. Now, that sum is 1,800. How did I get that? Remember, 6 times 3 is equal to 18. 1 zero means multiply it by 10. 2 zeros means multiply that times 100. And so 18 times 100 is equal to 1,800. But 1,800 is too large. So I'm going to cross that option out because 1,800 is larger than 1,575. And so we couldn't take any groups away from, we can't take 1,800 groups away from 1,575. But let's look at the number above that. Here, this one is a very good option. I can take 200 groups. That's going to give me 1,200 pieces. So this is what I'm going to do. If I want to break this 1,575 apart, I'm going to use 1,200 or 1,200 and take it apart. And I'm going to divide it by 6. Because division is the opposite of multiplication, I know that because 6 times 200 is equal to 1,200, that means 1,200 divided by 6 is equal to 200. So already I have eliminated 200 pieces from that 15, excuse me, 1,200 pieces from that 1,575. And I have 200. But... Let me ask you this, what do I have left over? Because 1,200 is not the same thing as 1,575. We need to make an equivalent expression here. So 1,200 plus what will equal to 1,575? If you said 375, then you're absolutely correct. But 375 is not the easiest thing to divide by six. So although we have 200, already set aside as a group, now we can still continue to break apart that 375. Let's look at our list again over here. Where can we go to get or take apart 375? Well, I have 360 pieces that I can take apart. So now I have 360 plus what? 15 divided by six, and that equals 375. 360 plus 15 is equal to 375. I was dividing that by 6, so I need to divide each one of these by 6. Because, again, we know that 6 times 60 is equal to 360, then we should know that 360 divided by 6 is going to equal 60 pieces. So now we're done with that one, and all we have left over now is just 15 divided by 6. So we have chunked away quite a bit already. But for those of you who still need to divide a little bit more and break apart, let's break apart that 15. Let's look at our list. Now, on our list, we don't have anything that's close to 15. So now we have to think to ourselves, hmm, what are some of my other multiplication facts that I should know? Well, I know 6 times 1 is 6, and I know 6 times 2 is 12. Huh. So I think that one's going to be closest. So now I can take apart 12 plus 3 divided by 6. Does everybody see that 12 plus 3 is equal to 15? And because that was being divided by 6, we had to divide these by 6. And if you do, then you can see that because 6 times 2 is equal to 12, then that means 12 divided by 6 is equal to what? 2. We've crossed that one out, and now we have two additional groups that we have broken out evenly into 6. Now, this one left over here is 3, 6. Can we take 
three and break it out into six equal groups? Well, technically we probably could, but then